Hey y'all, Jeremy James, the original Bourbon Realtor here. Welcome to the after Christmas version of Barstools and Bourbon. In his first whiskey review, this is his first legal whiskey review. This is my son, Ethan James. Ethan, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Fantastic, awesome. So today we're gonna be looking at a new, unique entry into the whiskey market. This is JT Mellick. All right, Ethan, you ready for your first whiskey review? My first one ever. 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 Anyway, um, so JT Mellick, a little bit about them. Uh, obviously, they're out of Louisiana. So they started um, growing rice in Louisiana like a long time ago on 20 acres. Um, what's the date? Uh, it began in, is that 19, 1896? 1896. 1896. So a long time, even before I was born. Um, they started growing rice down in Louisiana, and obviously with all grains, which is actually where whiskey began its its um, inception, is that grains are hard to keep. And what most farmers did, whether it's corn, wheat, rye, or barley, and including rice, is you distill it so you can keep it a lot longer. Because if you keep corn in a big bin over the winter time, what's going to happen to it? Going bad. It's going to get rot. It's going to rot. Or the mice and rats are going to eat it and everything else. But if you put it in and if you still it, then what happens? You keep it forever. Then you have parties. I mean, <laughs> then you get, it extends the shelf life, I think is the, the technical name. So last year, last summer, I was going over to pick up a bottle of uh, Wilderness Trail over at the distillery. And I um, pulled into the parking lot and um, was just sitting there. I was working on something, texting somebody or whatever. And lo and behold, I hear a on my window. And I turn and I look over my shoulder and it's Pat Heist standing there. And he does one of these. And so he goes, so I roll down my window. And the first thing he does is shoves the glass in my face and say, tell me what you think. Well, let me tell you, when Dr. Pat Heist shoves a glass of whiskey in your face. Can't say no. No, you drink it. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what your plans were. You drink whatever he's handing you. You no longer have plans. No, no. You're, you're going to be hanging out for a while. Um, it was it was really insane because when I took that first sip, it was it tasted similar to a wheat product, a wheated whiskey, a wheated bourbon or whatever. Um, and it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, Pat and I were talking about it for a bit and finally I just asked him, I was like, okay, okay, what's the score? What's the deal with this thing? And he says it's 100% rice. And I was like, what? So one of the things, especially with young whiskeys that we deal with, it's the grain qualities, whether it's corn or rye or barley. All the good stuff. Coming out early, especially in a young whiskey. So you have much more grain, almost like a, almost kind of like beer notes. He likes IPAs in all beer that tastes like grass clippings and um, hubcaps. So he the understands. Modern era. He under, the modern error. That's what he meant <laughs> to say. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that w that that happens is with young whiskey, um, the barrel notes take longer to overcome a lot of those those grain notes. Right. Um, things with young whiskeys tend to taste a little bit like lagers and ales and stuff like that. And they have those qualities to them. more mature whiskeys, six, seven, eight, 10, 12 years. It's much more of the barrel notes. Those are the, um, the caramels, those vanillas, those really rich, deep notes. And at that point, the grain notes fall away. Well, the interesting thing about rice whiskey is you don't have really strong, Grain notes. You get the barrel. So you get the barrel and you get it early. It's never so, a bad thing. All right, so let's get to, go ahead and get this thing poured out. Let's I hope we get a good cork pop out of this. Not that great. Whatever. Anyway. Get a good healthy pour. My first ever drink. This might go bad. Yeah, first ever drink. There you go. All right. So um and Mike, I apologize if I pronounce your name wrong. Um, but I immediately um, got a hold of the guy who's responsible for this. His name's Mike, I think it's Fruge, F-R-U-G-E. And we talked about it for a long time. Um, I wanted to get it on the show right away. He was not ready to go to market yet and didn't want to be undercut um, and completely understand. So we obviously held off. 
Um, touched base with him about a month ago, and uh, we're able to acquire one of these JT Mellicks. This one is um, this is small batch, aged uh, barrel aged for four years, and it comes in at 96 proof. They are just beginning their barrel pick, their single barrel series. Um, and I think they come in basically 111 proof or so, um, which is right where I like it. Under 115 in that neighborhood is is just actually perfect. I'm working my way up there. You'll get there. Um, but it's only been 10 days. Yeah, yeah, only been 10 days since the fifth. Right. Uh -huh. um, so they so down there, um, what they're doing on the farm uh, is they raise their own rice, and they're actually doing uh, crawfish or mud bugs or crawdads. So we're gonna have fun with that yeah. too. I'm gonna be calling Mike and be like, "Yo, send me up some crawdads." So we do some. We we knock out some crawdads now. Let me tell you, exactly right. So um, so we're excited about this. Um, so let's let's dive in. Um, first, we do we do appearance. Looks nice. For a four year old, uh, it looks a bit like. Wouldn't you say like about a lager? Yeah. Almost like a almost like a yingling, right? It's getting there. It's like about a yingling. It's not a pilsner. It's not a. Um, it's not a Bud Light or anything like that. Doesn't look like piss water, so that's good. So then what we do is we swirl it around, and all we're doing is looking on the sides through the glass, and we want to see if it's developing legs. She's got some decent legs. She got some decent legs. There you go. She got some decent legs. Um, it coats well, nice and even. Some legs show up, not a lot, so. Um, it beads up at the top really nice. Yeah, um, so hopefully, hopefully we got a decent viscosity, and that's what we're looking at with legs, um, is about that viscosity. How oily it is, how, whether it's thin. Uh, thin is going to be like a Bud Light or, or whatever, real just kind of crisp on the mouth. Uh, waxy, tends to coat really well. Um, oily, almost like the same thing as kind of like waxy. Mouth feel. Right, that mouth feel. Um, so we're looking there. That's all we're looking at, and it's not 100%, but, you know, who doesn't like to hold up their bourbon glass, swirl it around, and look like a pompous son of a bitch, right? I always like that. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's how you start. That's how you can impress everybody. If you go like this and just swirl it and hold it against the light, and, and of course, you got to drink with your finger out. All right, let's get into those. Let's find out what we got. It doesn't dry off the glass really. Bad. It doesn't push you out. 96, it's not bad. Yeah, see, at four years old, typically um, with with a bourbon, um, you have a lot of those either corn notes or rye notes right up front. And this does not, yes, it's made out of rice, which is what sake is made out of, but that's a rice wine. Yeah, you don't get that same. It's smell. not that sake type I've rice wine. I've never had sake. Yeah, never. Um... It doesn't have that sake type note, right? That kind of ricey type note. No. Got a little bit of ethanol on the nose. It's not much though, not to kick no. it off. No. Some really light caramels. The nose is is fairly light. Yeah, is what I would I'm consider on this that one. Much from it. What we'll do is we'll come back to the nose because mm -hmm. typically after you start drinking. Um, of course, ninety or seventy percent of your of your sense of smell is is um, is in your taste, and it works up through your olfactory, and not the old factory, your olfactory. You guys can Google that stuff later. It's good. It smells fresh, but it's nice, clean. Yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing extravagant, but it's not gonna. Some nice light oak in there. Yeah, you can cut me out on that. No, it's fine. We keep all the stupid stuff. Trust me. You, anybody who watches on a regular basis knows that I put corrections even under when I'm saying stuff completely, completely wrong. Um, and I, I've, I've done it on more than once. All right. Let's get in here. Let's see what we got. It's really refreshing, almost. It's got a, it's got sweetness. You get the rice mm -hmm. up front. I think that's like I'm getting like a little bit of citrus. I could be crazy. No, but that's right. <clears throat> if that's what you're getting, that's what you're getting. 
So a little bit of citrus is what you're is what you're pulling on it. Like if I, there was like a splash of Sprite in there, that's what I get. Yep. Nice. Yeah, because it's it's crisp on the mouth, yeah. right? So um, almost like almost like McDonald's Sprite. Yeah. Got that really kind of crisp bite, right? Um, yeah, I'm getting more of those uh, oak notes on the nose. Not a lot of vanilla so far. That one's pure butterscotch. I was getting caramels. Butterscotch, caramels. There you go. Those are all barrel nuts. Yeah. Any of that's barrel nuts. The nose gets a little bit harsher when you after you had a few sips. It's opening your mouth up. Yep. But that first sip was definitely kind of um, not strong ricey. It's certainly, you're not going to immediately think um, sake or anything like that, but it's got that quality to it. It's, it just seems really refreshing. I don't know why. I keep coming back to that. Yeah, it's got a crisp palate. Uh, the finish is, is kind of a lingering. It's medium long finish, which is nice. Not too bad of a Kentucky hug either. Mm -mm. It's there, but... I ain't hurting you. If you're looking for a young whiskey with barrel notes right up front, this is a great place to start. And it's something that's unique. With 100% rice is really unique in the, um, in the market today. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is it's just got so much... Um, potential at this point um i want to see this in in the barrel proof and i want to see this with more age because oh four more, four more years four more years at an eight year oh we're gonna be partying at that point i like it i do it's much more along the line of a weeded bourbon you're certainly not getting um, grassy rye notes or anything like that that's not that's not there the closest thing you'll you equate this to is is like a um a weller antique or a wilderness trail yeah um something in the wilderness trail for a year right so something with with sweeter notes not nearly as as grassy um and not nearly as what what they call spicy now for me spicy means two things if you're cooking, there's spicy as in what your spice is what you put in the food, and then spicy hot. Yeah. So, um, what I always tend to think um, for me is spices are the cinnamons, the cloves, and all that kind of stuff, and then herbs are your rye notes and your dills right. and all that. Um, so a lot of folks will just say it's spice or baking spices and stuff like that. Right. And for me, I like to differentiate a little bit more, and then you have the spiciness, which tends to be that. That little bit of alcohol burn on the mouth. Which there's not much of for me. Mm -mm. Then again, it's only what, 96 proof? Mm -hmm. But this is really good. This is really good. I think... In the summertime, I, this would be freaking fantastic. I think this will compete with, um, with some Japanese whiskeys. Japanese whiskeys tend to be really light. I haven't tried any. Um, them, so. They tend to be 80, 90 proof, and they tend to be much more floral. This um, is is along the lines of a Japanese style whiskey with that rice, um, but with a lot more of the barrel notes uh, within it. And so I, I'm a fan. Um, I want to see. I want to have the uh, the barrel proof on, um, and I want to see this with more years. It's coating the glass nicely now. This is nice. So we do a thing called bar, um, buy bar or pass. So yeah, retail on this is about 50 bucks. Your mileage is obviously going to vary, vary depending on where you get it at. Um, but for 50 bucks for me, this is an easy buy. Um, I like to have unique stuff on my bar. I like a lot of diversity. I'm not a one trick pony by any stretch. Um, I don't just... I do have favorites, don't get me wrong. I like my antiques, and I like my wilderness trail. 
and I like my Knob Creeks. I had my favorites, don't get me wrong, but I like a lot of diversity. And so for something unique on the bar, something that is is different, um, not so different that it's going to disgust you or whatever else, but something that you can introduce a new whiskey drinker to and show them a little bit of the diversity, JT Mellick. Get out and get it. Find it. Get your distributors to order it. And, and let's see you guys toast into JT Mellick. All right, guys. I'm Jeremy James, the Bourbon Realtor. I'm Ethan James, the son. This has been Barstool's and Bourbon. We'll see you all next time.